Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Hirsch for the Holidays. <laughs> One of many annual offerings I'm hoping to contribute here. Um, I'm very delighted to present this program, but before we get into it, I'll just start with the first number. How about that? Thank you. That was the flourish on Odeste Fidelis by Dr. Zeneda Stuart Robles, who is an award-winning black American female composer, vocalist, and teacher. Her works have been performed worldwide, and her original music, as you heard, can be described as energized, soulful, harmonically colorful, rhythmically driven, occasionally a few African elements, and touches of prog rock. So, there we are. Um, anyway, th I thought that was a very fitting beginning to our recital, just get us ready for this season. I'm excited about this concert because not only am I doing some things from Christmas, but I'm sprinkling in some Advent and even some Hanukkah uh, works as well. Um, but before we get there, we go to Bach. No recital would be complete without Bach. And so I'm going to be performing his first trio sonata in E flat. Now, what is a trio sonata? It's exactly as it seems. One part in the right hand, one part in the left hand, one part in the pedal. No chords, just single lines, all interacting with each other contrapuntally and creating the harmonies through those interactions. You hear the melody passed between right and left and feet, and depending on where you are in this church, you might even hear some antiphonal work with the instrument going back and forth. The first movement is just a jaunty, joyful little thing. The second movement is a beautiful interplay between our flutes. And then the third movement is just festive. And yes, it's not technically related to a holiday, but it's joyful, so why not?
Thank you. Now we move on to a wonderful collection of pieces by composer Samuel Adler. He was born in 1928 in Mannheim, Germany, and escaped the Nazis and came to the U.S. in 1939. I actually heard a personal story from him about how he was hiding in church lofts as they were trying to get out of Germany. And these church lofts were already bombed out and pipes were on the verge of falling, but they did it anyway because that's what they had to do to get out. Anyway, he came over here and just has a brilliant career in composition. 400 published works, five operas, six symphonies, 17 concerti, 18 string quartets, five oratorios, and four wonderful volumes of organ music. Um, just great. What you're going to hear is a set of three pieces, Takata, which features two traditional Hebrew songs from the Feast of Lights, or Hanukkah. Number two is recitation, though no melody is apparent of the traditional kind. To me, it sounds as if, it sounds like that devotion you have when you're reciting a scripture and you're trying to contemplate God's word and how it applies to this mad, mad world. And then finally, uh, the third movement is another traditional Hanukkah uh, tune uh, based off of Ayel Yivne Hagalil. Um, so you'll hear them sprinkled in, but he also kind of hides them a little bit. So it's a really brilliant little piece. So I hope you enjoy them. Also, feel free to clap between movements if you really like them. <laughs> or if you don't.
Thank you so much. Next up, we have a work by Leo Sowerby. Now, Leo Sowerby is considered the dean of American church music, having been the organist and choir master at St. John's Episcopal Church, then Cathedral, in Chicago from 1927 until 1955 when he retired. But then the people at the Washington National Cathedral got him to come out of retiring, uh, retirement to found and direct the College of Church Musicians, which was held at National uh, Cathedral. And our very own Tony Lee is an alumnus of that very esteemed program. <laughs> So, in essence, I only have one degree of separation between uh, myself and Sowerby. So thank you, Tony. Um, this work is from a, set of, a collection of pieces that are meditations on communion hymns. And the communion hymn that we will be focusing on now is the tune called Picardy, known to us as Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence. Uh, this is a lovely, uh, uh, lovely treatment of the hymn that's very reflective um, if you want to follow along with the words, though they don't necessarily match outright, it's more of an internal, um, internal reflection on that. But if you wish, the hymn can be found number 324 in hymnal 1982 in front of you, if you want. But if not, no worries. Um, you will hear four verses with little interludes in between, kind of a rise and a fall, but a gentle reflection. Enjoy.
Next up now, as we continue to anticipate the arrival of the birth of Christ, we go into a rendition of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel by the uh, highly influential black American female composer, Evelyn Simpson Carenton. Um, her works, she's been commissioned by the American Guild of Organists, Duke Ellington, she's arranged music for Kathleen Battle, Jesse Norman, she even was tasked to rewrite the choruses at the Metropolitan Opera for Porgy and Bess. Uh, yeah, just a legend. Um, this, um, this rendition of O Come, O Come, Manuel follows along the, the chant pretty well. You'll be able to pick it out. But she adds some uh, jazz and gospel influences in the harmonies. But this is a very accessible piece for many organists. So it's a great piece to add to a program. So please enjoy.
All right, now's the moment we've been waiting for. The offertory, <laughs> where all of you who have become burdened by all the cash in your wallets can relieve yourselves of the strain and benefit a wonderful program. No, in all seriousness, this program would not be possible without all of your support, and especially today's recital is, has been completely underwritten by Father Mark and Debbie Smith. So thank you so much. At this time, I'll ask our ushers to distribute the plates while I speak just a little bit about, uh, a little bit more about the Music Society. Um, as I said, it's completely supported by all of you. Uh, most of our upcoming performances, which you can see on the back of the program, have been completely covered by generous contributions. There are just a couple of small spots. So if you're still interested in supporting a full concert, an artist, let me know. Also, if you have a place that has a nice set-aside apartment or living space, maybe you'd like to host one of our visiting artists from out of state. For example, in February, our artist Jane Shivik is coming from Boston, Massachusetts, where she is on the board of the the Boston Wagner Society, um, and has been a Metropolitan Opera uh, finalist uh, for voice as well in those prestigious programs. Um, there's also, uh, at the very end of the season, two of my colleagues in May uh, will be doing a program called Organic, Certified Organic Opera. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, I'm going to be, tr myself, transcribing these arias and duets from the original orchestral scores for the organ. We can come forward now for the uh, collection, thank you. Um, that'll be a fun program, as are all of the events. Just a note that in February, not only do we have that great event with Jane Shivik, but the night before, we are hosting the American Guild of Organists chapter members recital. So if you just want some more great organ music, you know where to find it. Then another note you'll notice in the program, I will be hoping to offer organ lessons in the new year. I'm looking for anyone who would like to learn more about this instrument, their own instrument, maybe better their hymn playing, maybe look into repertoire. Maybe you're a beginner who already knows piano and would like to start the grand adventure on the greatest of the instruments, in my humblest opinion. And, uh, my email is in here. Contact me if you're interested. Spread the word. Um, we, we've got not only this phenomenal instrument here at St. John's, but there are a, a variety of wonderful instruments in the region that can be uh, played and learned and so that we can continue, uh, just continue the presence of organ music in Boulder, which I think is a very important thing. Um, so yeah, organ lessons. It's a good thing. All oh, right. You'll notice that I put this break right before the big piece. Um, I need the time to collect my thoughts as well. But let's talk about this next piece. Marcel Dupre, one of the great French organ composers and performers, um, also a contemporary of Leo Sowerby. They were existing together, um, as you can see in their birth dates on the program. Uh, Dupre studied with all of the greats in France. Alexander Guillemont, Louis Vierne, uh, Charles-Marie Vidor, um, all those greats. He became the professor of organ performance and improvisation at the Paris Conservatoire and has been famous for performing over 2,000 recitals throughout the world, most of them by memory, including marathons of the complete works of Bach. So uh, much kudos to that guy. But I bring up improvisation because a lot of his compositions that he wrote stemmed from improvising at the church. Um, for members who are here, you're familiar with my own noodling uh, and improvisation. And that's where the inspiration comes from for putting pieces together. And that's what we hear put in action in this wonderful variations on the Noël Nouvelle, uh, that very, very famous tune. We'll start out by just playing the hymn, by playing the tune, and then we just go through lovely, imaginative, colorful variations. Sometimes the melody is quite clear. Sometimes it's just an, a harmonic implication. Uh, so 
I hope you really enjoy this absolutely landmark piece. After this performance, you're free to join all of us over in the parish hall right across the courtyard for a light refreshment, uh, light refreshments, and to chat and uh, to conclude our wonderful evening together. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world. And I hope to see you at many more events here in the future. Thank you so much. <laughs>